This is Brian Schwartz from the University of California, San Francisco. I'm an infectious diseases doctor, and I'm going to talk to you now about aminoglycosides, a category of antibiotics. Learning objectives here are for you to understand the mechanism of action of aminoglycosides, know the main toxicities of aminoglycosides, be aware of the main resistance mechanisms, and then understand that aminoglycosides are primarily active against aerobic gram-negative rods. Let's start by talking about the mechanism of action. So the aminoglycosides fall into a category of antibiotics um, that tend to inhibit protein synthesis. The main aminoglycosides are gentamicin, tobramycin, streptomycin, and amikacin. I've highlighted gentamicin and tobramycin because those are the two that I think that are most reasonable for you to know at this time. The other two are used less frequently. As I said, they inhibit protein synthesis and they do this by binding the 30S ribosomal unit of 16S ribosomal RNA. By doing this, they cause misread of genetic code and inhibit translocation, ultimately leading to bacterial death. Therefore, they are bactericidal antibiotics. The mechanism of resistance, there are three different ways in big groupings. They inhibit uh, drug active, you, you can inactivate the drug, and you can do this by acetylation, phosphorylation, adenylation, and different organisms do it different ways. And actually, even one organism may have multiple different mechanisms for resistance. Therefore, it's hard for you to specify a single resistance mechanism. You can also have mutations that prevent um, entry by efflux pumps and also make binding changes to the receptor site of the aminoglycoside. These are all different ways to cause aminoglycoside resistance in different bacteria. How about the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics? Well, first it's important to know that aminoglycosides are cleared by the kidneys, and the pharmacodynamic principle is that higher the dose of the drug, higher the concentration you get, more killing of bacteria you get. So what you end up running into is a balance between efficacy, because you wanna go as high as you can, but also as you increase the dose of the drug, you worry about toxicity issues. So you end up having to monitor levels and trying to find that happy medium. There's also something that is somewhat unique about aminoglycosides, although other antibiotics can do this, and it's called the post-antibiotic effect, in that killing with aminoglycoside, and here you can see this is the log of E. coli, a gram-negative bacteria, um, and you can see, as you administer the drug, the number of bacteria go down. So not surprisingly, it's killed. But this post-antibiotic effect, you can see in compared to beta-lactams, like penicillins, where when the drug is removed, the bacteria start growing again. For aminoglycosides, there's this post-antibiotic effect where the killing continues for a bit of time afterwards. What's the spectrum of activity and the clinical use? Well, First, you want to think about aminoglycosides as primarily active against aerobic gram-negative rods. For example, E. coli or Pseudomonas. When they are used, they're used for urinary tract infections or bloodstream infections. But to be completely honest, given the toxicity issues that we talk about, they're actually used much less frequently in practice these days because we have other good drugs against this bacteria that are less toxic. I put in gray two other areas that they're used, but I feel like it's less important, so I just want you to glance over it. In patients who have streptococcal or enterococcal endocarditis, the combination of a beta-lactam with an aminoglycoside is used, so they're used together, because I said these drugs are not active against gram-positive um, bacteria alone, so it's only used in combination. There's some synergy. And sometimes in mycobacterial infections like tuberculosis, there's some activity of the aminoglycosides. But again, I think this is less important for you to know about, and I just would focus on the fact that they're active against aerobic gram-negative rods. One of the important points about aminoglycosides and why we don't use them anymore is the toxicity associated with them. One, nephrotoxicity. They are, can be very potent um, at causing kidney damage. Their, up, their uptake in the proximal tubular cells, and we can see very quickly in these patients elevated creatinine levels, demonstrating renal dysfunction. And it happens in, t in up to one out of five patients. Um, it is dose dependent and often reversible, although in some patients it's not. 
The other important toxicity is otovestibular toxicity. So in terms of both hearing and uh, vestibular system like balance, um, the mechanism isn't really clear. And unfortunately, hearing loss and issues with disequilibrium can be permanent and not reversible. And it is a serious toxicity. And again, these are some reasons that we don't use these drugs very frequently anymore. This is just a brief summary of the mechanism of action, mechanism of resistance, spectrum, and toxicity of aminoglycosides. Thank you.